from my kitchens to your tables. <laughs> Let's turn the everyday into gourmet. Hey guys, good morning, happy Saturday. My name is Valerie Stubb and welcome to my home. We're hanging out this morning. I hope everybody has had a fantastic week. We have something very special in store for you today and I've grabbed a little coffee for myself because I am so excited to be able to hang out with you. Um, I'm sort of in my office, we're doing hosts at home. But this morning, I don't know if you saw, Chef Curtis Stone was also airing live from his home on HSN. And we got a chance to snag him for a little bit. So we're gonna jump into Chef Curtis Stone's home. We're gonna see what he's cooking up at home. We're gonna take a little sneak peek and we're gonna chat with him this morning. We're gonna get some inside tips and tricks. We're also gonna be able to showcase his number one best-selling cookware. So we're gonna be able to ask him questions about that. Um, so yeah, so this is exciting. We're happy to have you. We're happy hopefully you are safe at home. There he is, good morning. Hey, how you doing, Valerie? Hi. I'm good. So nice. good to see you in your home, and I'm in my home. I love it. I love also our special guest in the back. Who's who's the pup that just walked by? Oh, so this is Sam. Hey, Webster, come over here. We've got two. Come here, boys. Look and face the camera. Look over Hi, here. Webster Show and me. Sam. Oh, my God. Me and Webster. They, uh, I've been cooking. I was on air this morning, 6 a.m. over here, so it was still dark outside. And the dogs were like, what is he doing? You know, there's all these smells <laughs> in this house. Like, pork roast and you name it, so they're pretty excited. Yeah. Well, we're excited to be able to see you in action in your home. Um, you know, this is all about us being at home, spending time with our families. But, yeah, let's find out, um, Curtis, what uh, – let's see. Are you going to show us what next? So – I've got this, this is the pork roast that we have available. Got it. If you don't have it, that's great. You can still use another piece of meat, but I'm gonna show you how it comes first and foremost. Let me just open up the box. Right, we deliver it all frozen, right? We do still have some of these available, by the way, but this is what you get. It's like opening a little gift. Uh, but yo, there I am in the box, look at that. Hi. <laughs> uh, but it comes frozen solid, so you can see, Frozen solid as a rock, right? What you need to do is defrost that piece of meat. Now, this is a pork okay. loin that is brined, right? So we do all the hard work for you. If you want to brine your own piece of meat, whether it be a chicken, a big piece of pork, that's a pork loin roast, um, what you do is you make uh, a salt, sugar, and aromatics um, is basically what goes into a brine. So it's very, very simple. Um, and then you end up with a beautiful big piece of meat like this. So this one I've let defrost, but that's a brine piece of meat. Because you've got okay. that fat cap on the that's what you're going to put into the pan first. So it's already brine. If you want to add a dry rub, you can. I've just had that sort of sitting out there like that. And I've got from my spice collection, my uh, spicy Louisiana rub. So I'm going to just hit it with just a little, not too, too much, uh, because it's already got that delicious flavor on the inside. And then you bring it over and pop it into a nice hot pan. Gorgeous. Now, yeah. which pan are you using? So this is my oval pan. This is the Dura pan, of course. I'm going to sprinkle that with a little bit more of that dry rub. I'll show it to you. We actually, we were just on air selling an 11-piece set of the Dura pan. I've got it all set up back here on my on my countertop. You get this beautiful big. Um, I actually steamed some salmon in here, so the salmon's still in there. And you get that beautiful big steamer, and then underneath that, of course, is 12 inches um, of saute pan, which is amazing, which you can use as a steamer or a saute pan. Uh, there's a stock pot included, which is this beautiful guy. Now, when I say Dura pan, for those of you that haven't seen it yet, it's that, or you're over there. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, it's the five layers of the stick. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm still getting used to it. Uh, <laughs> I love it. Now you can see me too. On the night, you want to see the food, that's more important than me. Let me switch the difference. All right, so the five layers of the non-stick is what makes Durapan so special. And then that stainless steel disc gives you that extra strength. Also super cool. All right, so that goes... Um, so anyway, there's 11 pieces. You can go on to hsn.com. There's so many amazing things that we've got on offer down there right now. So, so go check it out. But the pork roast, all you're really doing is getting a little bit of color on that um, fat side, that, that side that has that fat cap on it. 
And the fat caps really important, by the way, when you're cooking pork, you want to get that incredible um, little piece of fat on there. Uh, and then what you do is you just turn it over, just check it, make sure that you're getting a little bit of that colour, right? Oh yeah. Now, Chef, did you have to add any oil or butter or anything to the pan? None whatsoever. So the DuraPan has that incredible technology and you get that five layers of DuraPan. So, so nothing's going to stick to it. No oil, no butter required. So it's a really good, healthy way uh, to be cooking. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, and, and I love this oval pan because it sort of fits everything that you otherwise can't fit into a smaller pan. I did a mm -hmm. spaghetti mm -hmm. Actually, I'll pull out and show you guys in a moment. But you know what you do with this is you're gonna go ahead and turn that over and sort of fit. And then I'm gonna drop it in the oven. Now I cheated, of course. I'm a TV chef, so I'm allowed to cheat. All right, I did like. Put <laughs> I love it. So I'm gonna take that because I'll show you why I did. I'll drop this in the oven. And I'll pull the one out that I already put in. And the only thing I did different is the one that's already in here was I brushed it with a little bit of mustard and then okay. I sprinkled some herbs over it, right? So I'm going to let it rest, and that's an important part of this process because what you do when you let something rest is you actually lower the, uh, the internal temperature, right? If I cut into that pork right now, the juices are going to go everywhere. I mean, the juices are going to go everywhere right. anyway because we're bright and very juicy, but you don't want to lose the juices. That's the important part. So right. you got to let it rest. But How long do you let it rest? Good question. Half the time it takes to cook is how long you should rest for. So if it takes you an okay. hour to cook, you should rest for an hour. Yeah. Not only are you just one of the nicest people that we all know, you created a stellar product that you stand behind. You know, you didn't just put your name on something. Um, and obviously in your kitchen, you chose red. So was that your decision or is that Lindsay's decision? I have no, I have no <laughs> weight in the same walk over to this house. <laughs> Lindsay is the style director for sure. Yes, uh, she yeah. is. So she uh, and the truth is, she changes it. her mind. She says, "You know what? I oh. like turquoise this time. I take out all the red and I bring in all the turquoise." So, uh, yeah, we can we can flip it around. That's that's one of the benefits of having your own line of kitchenware. I guess you can always keep absolutely. It you know, I love I mean, it. Well, the, the let's talk about. Go ahead. No, no, sorry. After you, you go. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I think, you know, you, you mentioned we bring this line to everyone, and the reason I only sell it at HSN, it, this is my brand, I own it. I don't I don't just stick my name on it, like you mentioned. And mm -hmm. I want to bring people incredible value, and that's what HSN represents, because I'm able to sell it direct, you know. If I was to sell mm -hmm. it a different model, I'd sell it to a rep group, and then they'd sell it to a distributor, and then that distributor would sell it to a retailer, and all these people, like, double the price. So, you know, this set that right. you know, we have today, this set, it could be four or five hundred bucks in a normal retail model. And food always brings us all together, so it's always nice to have a special meal. It sure does, and you know I encourage you to put a special little touch on it that's akin to your family. We've got a veggie garden, and my son and I. This probably sounds like I'm making it up. My son Hudson <laughs> absolutely goes crazy for chimichurri. Right, every time I cook a Whoa. steak, he's like chimichurri, dad, and I think it's because he makes it himself. But I've got some stuff out of our garden. Some cilantro, some parsley, some chives, some basil. And we make this sauce all the time because you don't have to go out to the store and go and get anything, which is really cool. But let me show yes. you how you do it because it's very simple. All you do is you take, I've got my mini food processor, which we also did a presentation on this morning, uh, which is such a great little tool because you really, the cleanup is so much simpler. I toss in a clove of garlic and then just the leaves, not too much of the stalk, but don't get crazy about it. A little bit of the stalk won't kill you. Cilantro goes in, same deal with some parsley, and you'll see my chives, some of them are nice and green, some of them are a little bit yellow because they're out of my garden and I'm not going to waste any of them, you guys. So I take my chives and I toss those in as well, and then a little bit of basil. But the truth is whatever herbs you've got available to you will work, as long as they're soft herbs. You don't want to use anything too hard like rosemary or uh, bay leaf or anything like that because that's a little bit too hard. So that's got garlic and fresh herbs. Then you throw in a little sherry vinegar, right? A little bit of white mm. wine if you like. You use the wine, but you definitely use the vinegar. And then go and put a generous amount of oil. Very similar to a pesto. And it's interesting to me because 
if you think about these kind of sauces, they kind of exist in many different um, cuisines, right? So if you think right. about gremolata or pesto, they're herb-based sauces um, in, in Argentina, the chimichurri, or throughout South America, they, they eat a lot of this too. So um, very, very simple, easy ways to create sauces. So all I do is stick all of that in. It looks too, too easy to be true. Uh, a little bit of salt. And then if you want to choose a spice, you know, we put some of that Louisiana spice. So in keeping with that Cajun sort of idea, mm -hmm. I'm going to use a bit of Louisiana. Yeah. Um, and by the way, no spices, if you're interested. I've got two different sets. So here's the first one. They're the best. This is called the Grill Collection. Can you see that? A bit better for you. Mm -hmm. So that's got the Gwen. This is the one we use at Gwen. Smoky, sweet barbecue rub. We've got the urban garlic seasoning, and then of course that black and spice. So you can pick those up. And I call them my secret weapons because every time you're, you're cooking, you'll be able to use those. And then I also have the flavors of the world, which is this set over here. And that's got Italian, spicy Louisiana, Mexican, and Hawaiian barbecue. Also you know, Chef, talking about your spice collections, right now would be a perfect time to pick those up as a gift for somebody that you're not going to be seeing. Maybe you normally spend Memorial Day or July 4th with somebody, and we're not really sure what's going to happen in the next few months, but what a great gift to ship, ship to somebody that is that grill master that loves to, you know, cook and, and have a wonderful um, meal so that they can still feel, you know, like they've got something special coming directly from you. So I love that HSN does that and that you can get little special touches. And honestly, those are game changers when it comes to just changing up the flavor the same meat you just change up the flavor of the spices which i love that you put those together yay Lord, look, look at this. <laughs> come, come over here with me i've got my bread bin we always keep this over here right sorry i just ran out of your shop but here's the bread bin that we we have at home and without fail we always have one of, we've got some bacon in there as well, but we always have one of the loaves that we make in that bread maker. I just made that yesterday. It's such a beautiful bread. And there's so many different options, but I'm, I'm glad you got that. That's, that's a fun, fun yeah. little tool. Do, they, do the kids have a favorite bread? Because obviously you can kind of make your own flavors. Like, are they yeah. sweet? Are they savory? What does everybody like in your household? Totally split decisions. My youngest, he likes <laughs> to straight up bread, right? But my oldest, he goes for the um, he goes for the raisin, uh, all the dried fruit that we put in there. He loves all that stuff, a little bit of cinnamon. So I'm actually thinking to do like a version of hot cross buns, but do a really big oh. like, hot cross loaf. <laughs> anyway, we'll that's see. cool. Um, yeah, 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 fun. Um, so fun. Okay, I've back to your sauce, your chimichurri sauce. Sure, sure. Very, very simple, right? Now, it's so easy. You don't want to tell anyone how easy it is because then they'll, they'll think you didn't go to any effort for them. All I do is I turn it on. It just pulls it all down. And, oh, there's one leaf. Uh, stuff in there. It pulls it all down and that's it. It's so easy. You can't believe it, right? And yeah. when you take that lid off, I mean, it's just mm. such a beautiful source of heat. Um... Liz, could you grab me like a little sauce boat, please, honey? Uh, just something to put the sauce in, a little bowl. <laughs> Lindsay going to make a beautiful. special appearance too? Come on, Liz. Oh my God. Come like, on, Liz. No, we want to say hi to you. <laughs> I saw her beautiful face like yesterday it. when we were doing our test. She's been operating the camera this morning, um, and now she's, she's by prop styles, which... You know, well, she's special, she's yeah. used to being in front of the camera. You 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 married somebody beautiful and talented, and wonderful mother. I love also for those that don't know about Chef and his gorgeous wife. They are also some of the most beautiful souls. They give so much to so many people. Um, no, go back to them. Go back to them. <laughs> there they are. Here she is. Hi. Hi. I'm like, Hi, gorgeous. I love it. You're so beautiful. I just think. I just, I just wanted to say, like, for the, for those of you guys that don't know, you two, honestly, 
our hashtag couple goals. You guys are the most amazing people. Um, I know just in your community and among how much you give for all of your philanthropy and everything. So I just don't know if people know that about you guys being such a, an amazing power couple. Uh, thanks so much. Thank you. Good to see you. <laughs> Good to see you. Yeah, 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 yeah. I get it. I get it. No, it's so true, though. I think, you know, it's that, uh, you know, I, I just feel like for as successful as you are and as successful as Lindsay is, you guys really complement each other so well. And you have such a, you know, a beautiful home and a beautiful life. But, you know, it's just so it's nice to see both of you. And we love the food and we love the cookware. But, you know, we're all home right now. We're sharing a little bit more of our lives. So I appreciate Lindsay popped in. That was awesome. Isn't that amazing? Thanks, babe. She's looking at me like, no, you're in trouble when we get I want to get a fire as well to come on for I'm so sorry. Thank you. So for those of you asking about how you can shop, Curtis's collection for his pans, his bakeware, so Dura Bake, Dura Pan, all of his spices and all the different accoutrements, go to hsn.com. We've got a full assortment. You're about to show one of my personal favorites. I should go get mine from my kitchen. My uh, my trivet, the, the rolling drying rack, it's one of the first things that yeah. I bought, and it's the number one thing that I give because I feel like people, it's a game changer in the kitchen. It sure is. And listen, my wife has taught me so much about this tool because she saw me using it, putting hot pans on it, and she snatched it. And I was like, where'd the trivet go? I'm looking in the cupboards. And then I go into her bathroom, and guess what's in her bathroom? For a hair curler. <laughs> Awesome. And then she had a straightener. I still don't understand, for the guys out there, why you need a straightener and a curler for the same head of hair. To me, that's the opposite. But anyway. Um, it's it's the same little... reason you need... No, 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 no. It's the same reason you need savory bread and you need sweet bread. Okay. Now I understand. Thank you for clarifying <laughs> that. I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the truth. It can go to 500 degrees in an oven, right? So super hot. You'll never bake anything at 500 degrees, of course. But what it means is anything that is hot can go straight onto it. So you don't damage your kitchen counter. You don't damage your dining room. So that's a really amazing tool to pick up as well. I've actually got my pork resting on right now. And let me show you. The other thing that's pretty cool are these little silicon handles. So they just slide onto that pork, onto that, the handles of the, uh, the pan just like that. So I'm sure you'll all relate. I bet you've all burnt yourself at some point in time on, on, a, on a, a hand panel. Well, with these little gorgeous um, silicon, it'll never happen to you again. All right, so I'm ready to carve. It's gonna be really, really um, simple. So we've let that pork rest. Truly, you could have let it rest for another five or 10 minutes, but hey, who's counting? Let me pick this up, bring it on over here. Now, oh, that looks so I good. That looks good. How do you know your pork's cooked? This is another little tool that's going to change your life. So this is called the um, thermometer, but guess what? It runs on kinetic energy. So I give that a shake. Uh -huh. Okay. It comes to life. You'll see the temperature flash up there. It's a digital read thermometer. And then what you do is you pull the probe out and you pop the probe into the thickest part of the pork. Now, if you're not sure how it's supposed to be cooked, just click over here and I'll bring this up nice and close. See how we've put all the measurements there? Lamb, pork, yeah. beef, medium, medium well. So I'm going to poke that right into the thickest part of my pork block. And it's going to tell me an internal read. We want it to be like 150 to 160. Look at that. We're at 161, 164. It's the perfect temperature, right? So we know that it's cooked all the way through, which is important, especially if you're doing chicken and things like that. But have a look at how perfectly juicy this pork roast is going to stay. Now, if you don't have my pork, that's okay. You'll be able to do the same thing here with a piece of beef and then just finish it, like I said, with a little bit of mustard, some beautiful fresh herbs. You could do it with a lamb shoulder. You know, so there's a lot of different ways that you could make it that are really special. Um, I'm going to flip that around. I know brisket's really popular as well for Passover. And then I'm going to go under that gorgeous pork roast and... Look at that. I, I feel like I want to just like go like this and just grab <laughs> grab some from the plate. Doesn't that look good? And then that chimichurri, of course, that we made, I'll just put it in a little jar. Watch this. I'm going to just go straight over the top. Oh, that looks so good. Doesn't that look great? And it's so easy. You know, when you're roasting, 
and cooking at home. If you have the right product, it really does just change everything. It means everything becomes a whole lot easier. In fact, I put some, um, talking about these gorgeous big oval pans, I put in some spaghetti squash before. Um, and what I'm gonna do, let me just quickly get my shrimp back because I don't wanna damage my countertop. So let me just go ahead. Oh, it's over here, sorry. Pick this up, drop that down. My wife turned me on to this um, spaghetti squash. It's, I uh, love spaghetti it's squash. Awesome. Okay. Great. Well, it's got a little dark, but that's okay because it's just around the edges. So here's the deal. Mm -hmm. I need a fork. Maybe I can do it with my tongs. I'll take a fork with you. <laughs> I'll take a fork. Yay. He's got me my uh, bear cord, another product that's available. Yeah. Um, so you just go on into that spaghetti squash like that. And the cool part is it all sort of oh. gets all stringy. Really, really simple. And all I did for that, by the way, is I drizzled it with a little bit of oil. I put some seasoning. I put the Italian spice on that one, actually. And then what you do, oh, well, you could leave it a bit more al dente than this, but this is still going to be really good. You just go ahead, scrunch all of that out. Doesn't that look cool? That's now, amazing. Are you guys celebrating? We are definitely celebrating. I'm not on air tomorrow, so I will be keeping it low key. It's just me and my husband and our dog. So um, I haven't quite figured out the menu. Today was sort of my first day off, so I'll be putting that together. And I feel a little inspired now, Chef, because I love spaghetti squash. And I have your pans. In fact, I think my husband, when I started doing this, he was actually making us our, our brunch. Ooh, that looks so good. Um, making them in our dirt, our dura pans, which we have had for years now. So I love, 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 love. Again, I'm watching, you know, no oils, no butters, all that kind of stuff. And the fact that we have the, the 11 piece set, which um, I know they just popped up on your screen. Honestly, you guys, if you're watching, and you don't have the Durapan set, this is a good day to get it because you are getting that 11 piece collection. So you're getting a full assortment. Chef, can you run us through all the pieces that are in that 11 piece collection? Oh, I'd love to. So we've given you all the pieces that you absolutely need, right? So think about this, you get a 12 inch skillet. So this is that really big, beautiful skillet. I don't have one laying around, but you can see it there on the screen. And that comes with a yeah. steamer insert and that beautiful domed lid, right? So that's a 12 inch. So that's as big as it gets in the world of saute pans. Then we give you two real specialty pieces. We give you the 11 inch square grill pan with the buffet handles, right? Mm -hmm. So you can be grilling for a year, which is really cool. And you also get the 11 inch oval pan, which like I said before, you can fit all, yeah, even that big spaghetti squash fits perfectly in there. So that's another right. great specialty. We give you some more all rounders though, the 1.3 quart saucepan, the two quart saucepan, and then of course that big stock pots, 4.8 quarts. Um, so they all come with lids. Um, you're getting that gorgeous domed stainless steel lid, which is just such a beautiful showpiece. So I've really put this set together to give you Pieces that you would normally get in a set, but then also all of the workhorses that you'll just be using breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I love it. So you're getting everybody prepared. I feel like it's also a good time for practice. You know, maybe you're just cooking for your immediate nuclear family at home, but then you're going to be a star chef with chef's cookware. And then when people start coming over and you start having parties again and you start hosting dinners, you're going to be like, oh my gosh, I've had so much practice at home when you have the right cookware, yeah. when you have the right tools. So that's what makes it so exciting. Tell everybody sort of what yeah. you showed us today and what your plans are for tomorrow with your family. So I've got this beautiful big pork roast. This is how it arrives to your door. So you can still pick it up if you want to. It's a three pound piece of pork. Now the amazing thing about this is it's a loin roast, right? What we've done for you is we've brined it. So we've used fresh herbs and spices, a little bit of salt and sugar, and then we've, we've gone ahead and brined that. So the flavor's already in the pork for you. What I did was stick it in one of my beautiful oval pans, one just like this. This has got the remnants of the spaghetti squash, but this is the beautiful uh, oval pan that we, we used to cook it. Um, I put a little mustard, and then we, we just roasted it in the oven for about 40 minutes. It's very, very quick to do. We roasted some spaghetti squash. We made that chimichurri sauce. So, you know, that will be our Easter feast tomorrow. Um, and the truth is, it's quite interchangeable. So if the pork was beef, you'd do it the exact same way. If it was lamb, mm -hmm. you'd do it the exact same way. With the beef, you'd want to cook it a little less because you'd sort of want that a little pinker. Uh, but that's it. It's very, very simple and very easy. 
we've had a lot of people that are just so happy and so thankful that um, we've been able to kind of see your home, see your family, and that you're still bringing us, you know, all of your amazing products that you have, which by the way, just to give a little kudos and shout out to Chef, for those that don't know, you are the number one brand we have across all categories at HSN. So not only are you the number one culinary brand, but you're the number one rated brand in the entire network, which is really big. So I just want to give, give you kind of like that bravo um, for, you know, just bringing quality products, products that make our home better, products that make our meals better. And so I just want to say thank you for being a part of the HSN family. Valerie, thank you so much. I mean, you, you're in my home kitchen right now, and truly, this is where it all started. I worked for many years in professional restaurants, and um, and then when I'd come home, I was always scratching my head, saying, "There's got to be a better way to cook than this for people at home." Because, you know, the cutting boards are too small, and the the kitchenware is just not like professional kitchenware. So I sort of went on this mission right. to try and develop kitchenware that solved problems for people when they're cooking at home, uh, because I got fed up and mm -hmm. frustrated with all the problems that brands make that don't follow through. Um, and, you know, the fact that we've become HSN's favorite brand, I, I mean, I, I, I'm so humbled, you know, and I'm so, so grateful. The truth is we rely on our customers. Everybody writes reviews on our products, but they give us amazing ideas. They tell us, why don't you do this? Or why don't, you know, we've half of our line, we have over a hundred products at hsn.com. Half of them have been inspired by customers' comments. So thank you yeah. so much to everyone part of the brand you really are you're a huge part of what we do now nice chat to you too valerie so good to see you from over the other side of the country but, uh, i know i know i still i still need to get out to la again and come over and visit we'll do that you know maybe next year another time bring your hubby we'll book you. all right <laughs> definitely okay right. take care chef thank you so much give Lindsay um and the family our love stay safe thank yeah. you everybody